Well, the down economy has Americans up in arms and politicians at each other's throats. Well, what's the answer? Author and teacher Danny Kofke says the solution starts at home. Thanks, Throughout the country, angry mobs vent their anger with the economy and with Wall Street. And then this is not only happening to me, but to a lot of people. So do something to make America live again. Hundreds swarm major cities like the Big Apple to protest. We're getting budget cuts, we're getting job cuts, and the very wealthy are getting tax cuts. That's not fair. But are Wall Street and what many Americans call corporate greed entirely to blame? The number one thing that has gotten to people in trouble nowadays is they don't know where their money is going. Author Danny Kofke argues it's up to every American to look out for his or her own financial future, especially when the government can't. He and his family live comfortably on a modest $40,000 teacher salary, not even close to the $250,000 that some in Washington define as rich. In his book, A Simple Book of Financial Wisdom, Kofke explains how a family of four can live on a single salary, save over $5,000 a year, establish an emergency fund, and set aside money for college and retirement. The father of two delivers a plan that he believes can solve the economic crisis one household at a time. Sounds too good to be true, but he says it really is true. Danny Coffey is joining us now, and I welcome him back to the 700 Club. Danny, good to see you. Hey, good seeing you. Thanks so much for having me back on. I was so amazed the last time to read about the fact you and your wife had vacations in Europe, and you went hither and yon, you bought nice things, and, and yet you had a, a, a limited income, about $20,000, whatever it was, and you saved all kinds of money. What's the secret? I think for most people, you just have to know where your money is going. There's two ways to make more money. Either A, get a higher paying job, which let's face it, it's a little more difficult than it was five years ago for sure most, is. or B, you have to cut back on what you are spending money on. And most of us have areas in our lives that we overspend in. So tracking your spending, seeing where that money is going, then you're able to cut back in certain areas and put more money back into your pocket. Give me the top three overspending areas where we could cut back. Definitely eating out. A lot of people eat out, yeah. meals. Uh, personally, I brown bag lunch to school most days, eat my yeah. lunch. I uh, don't have a lot of time anyways as a teacher, but that's a big area. Cell phones, that amazes me when we think about how much money I see people all the time walking around with the smartphones. And I didn't realize I just got a phone in August that I could text. Sent my first text message ever in August, and we have a cheap one, and it's still $30 a month. So some people are constantly connected to the Internet. I mean, those plans can be $80, $90 a month. So that's another big area. That's $1,000 a year. And, and right. eating out, you could, you could go $500 a month easy or more. Easy. Thousand. Well, let's just say Monday through Friday, you eat out lunch. We're going to keep it cheap. Fast food, we'll say $5 a pop. Most of us won't think twice about spending $5 or, or even miss it. But yeah. That up five dollars a day is twenty five dollars a week, one hundred dollars a month, or one hundred dollars a month, thirteen hundred dollars a year. Yeah, yeah. thirteen hundred dollars a year is a lot of money for most people. And that's after tax money, too. <laughs> yes, all right. Well, what else can they save money on? Well, I think uh, we think about uh, cable TV and satellite. Uh, we're fortunate we saw satellite and it's something that we pay a decent amount for but if push came to shove that would be one of the things we would get rid of because think about on a satellite I probably have 400 stations I can watch no. I watch maybe 20 of them so is it really a need no for most people it's well, you not can get it free over the air is free. that's right that's right so that's another thing uh, the home phone plan now that a lot of people are using cell phones some people can take away that home phone plan because they don't need it anymore yeah and uh... In your life, you've accomplished, you, you, your salary for the, between the two of you was $40,000. Mm -hmm. Now, your wife uh, was able to stop working looking after the kids. Yeah, she was. She stayed at home for seven years. Uh, she actually just went back in September to teach preschool. My four-year-old, she uh, actually is her teacher. and. Uh, not making a lot of money, so it definitely doesn't add a lot to our income, but uh, it's something that it's best of both worlds. She gets to be our teacher, and also we make a little extra money. People made fun of you, didn't they, when you were doing this? Tell us about it. Yeah, they did. Uh, <laughs> when we were weird years ago, we planned, had a plan to make it on a teacher's salary. We obviously couldn't have a large mortgage, a lot of debt. So while Tracy was a first grade teacher and I was a teacher, we made a lot more money than we do right now, but we still live very frugally. People would say, get off your wallet, do this, do that. But we knew we had a goal in mind, and I always think if people People that, uh, that don't do well managing their money, if they're laughing at you and telling you to change, then you must be doing something right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, uh, well, what's the hardest rule that you follow in this? 
Well, probably being mocked and not being able to buy everything I want. Uh, I'm like anyone. If I see someone driving a convertible BMW, of course I want it. So that probably is the biggest thing. But the good thing is with us, I tell myself I can have it, but something has to give. Either A, I'll have to get a higher paying job, mm -hmm. B, I'd have to get a second job and see less of my family, or C, Tracy would have to go back and get a higher paying job. And so far in the last seven years, not one materialistic thing has made us want to change the way we're living. Well, you can save an awful lot in cars, the, uh, the automobile. I mean, what are you recommending? A two or three year old car? Definitely. Uh, the depreciation factor is so huge, right, when you drive, drive a brand new car off the lot. So yes, you can get a, a reliable used car, two, three years old, and save a lot of money doing it that way. Now, you've got a little girl, and you're teaching that little girl the principles when she is, what, three years old? Yes, we started when she was three with basic chores, uh, savings, spending, and giveaway jars. So she would get paid at the end of the week, and money would go into each of those jars. And then as she got older, uh, once she oh, turned yeah, six... You've got, a, you got a, a saving jar, a spending jar, and a giveaway jar. Correct. And she would so get she paid like a dollar a week, so she would first know to put money in the giveaway jar, 10% in the giveaway jar, 25% in the savings jar, and the rest would go in the spending jar. Just that lesson alone right there, most of us follow that in our lives, even as we got older, earned uh, more money. You gave away 10% first, you saved 25%, then you, then you spent the rest. I don't think our country would be in the mess that we're in right now. What happens now. to the little girl? I mean, does she, she, she learned those lessons? She did now, um, and, and she shows me some things by now that she spends her own money because now she's seven. So when we go to the store, of course, she see, sees things that she wants. We never have an argument. We'll go home and check your jars. If you have enough in your savings or spending jar, you can buy that. And she saves up to buy her own things. And, and it just shows she doesn't spend money frivolously because she knows she has worked for it. And actually, when she turned six, we upped it a little bit. And now to earn her money, she has to take out the garbage. And she also has to clean her bathroom, which includes scrubbing the toilet. She's a six-year-old. She's taking out the garbage? Yes. But I wanted to teach her at this point, now that she knew how to manage <laughs> money yeah. if you work harder than most because most six-year-olds probably aren't yeah. scrubbing their toilets okay. if you go above and beyond you'll get rewarded because I gave her a little raise too in her allowance and she gets paid more <laughs> but I wanted to teach her that that if you go above and beyond what others are doing you'll be rewarded she'll be a million by the time she's 21 I mean that's <laughs> fantastic yes well how's your your book been catching hold are you having a lot of people who, who say daddy's got the answers Yes, I do. I, unfortunately, a lot of people, I, I've had some comments saying, uh, well, uh, you know, try living off 40 grand a year in New York City. And th there's some people that down it. But the thing is, you have to do what's right for your family. I chose not to live in New York City because I knew the yeah. cost of living was high. So we make it work for us. And I think when it comes to our finances, you have to do what's right for you and your family. This is what's right for my family, for Tracy to be able to stay at home, raise right. our girls, live on a teacher's salary. That works for us. For some people, it's more important to drive a fancy car, have a bigger house. Have at it. If it's better for your family, yeah. then go for it. But you just have to stay true to How yourself. How much have you saved over the years? Um, over the years, uh, we have a one-year emergency fund in place, but we also invest each month for our retirement. So I don't... Right now, we're on track to retire as millionaires once we hit 65 because of compound interest, the magic of that. Okay. Dollar cost average every single month, we invest a set amount in mutual funds. And then over time, 30 years from now, we'll, we should be millionaires if it holds true. So you're to, one of those terrible millionaires that Schumer wants to get. Huh? <laughs> that's true, I guess. <laughs> I, guess. I know. That's, uh, that might be a whole other discussion. <laughs> Listen, ladies and gentlemen, Financial Wisdom, a, a simple book. And... Uh, Danny Kafka, this is good stuff. I mean, the man's amazing. He's simply amazing of what he's done, how he's done it, and how he's built up money. He's bought some real estate. He's just had all kinds of wonderful things happen. And uh, Danny, you're, you're an example to us all. So thank you so much for being here. Well, thank you so much for having me back God on. I've enjoyed you. it. Thank you. If you'd like to learn more, go to CBN.com.